Hello again, Michael Friedberg here from beautiful North Carolina and today I have two products for review. The first is going to be the shaving soap. It is the Don Jose from Abate y La Mantilla. This was a complete surprise. This sort of showed up out of the blue. It has been provided for review. It may be a, like a one-off uh, instance for the scent. I don't know if this will be sort of a permanent addition to their lineup. The Don Jose is a lightly mentholated version of their soap and the scent is coconut and banana. So let me just show you the soap in the tin. Looks very similar to some of the other Abati La Mantilla soaps. Very, very similar texture. Uh, quite soft, a little bit tacky. I've of course scooped some of this out and put that into the Captain's Choice loading bowl. The scent on this is, uh, for me it is predominantly a very sweet, ripe banana scent with a wonderful sort of base of coconut in there. Overall a very light, uh, a very sweet scent um, and a really nice addition for summer. It is lightly mentholated. We'll talk about that as we go through the shave. Today's razor is going to be a 1939 to 1941 uh, US uh, Gillette, which I think is one of the ones that was a, a military issue. Um, I'll just show you the, the top cap, which as you can see still has the small corner nubs for holding the blade in the top cap. I'm using a Gillette silver blue that I've used all week. So this will in fact be shave number six on this blade. No issue so far making easy work of the, of the daily shave. Standard tech base plate. I am going to use a washer. For those of you that are asking about the washer, the reason I'm doing that is in part because these razors came from the person that I purchased them from with washers included. And it really just helps for some of these older razors. It just adds a bit of a buffer between, in this case, this very cool Bakelite handle um, buffer between that and the uh, and the base plate. So you can still screw it on pretty tight, but you're not exerting a lot of pressure or scraping along the uh, the, the base metal of the base plate there. Um, and I think this just worked out really well. So yeah, it is a, uh, a Bakelite handle. That means it is definitely very head heavy. Uh, well, comparatively head heavy, just the handle is quite light. So this feels very head heavy in terms of balance. Um, let me go ahead and get my face wet and we'll go ahead and start shaving after I lather up. So today's brush is going to be the first rod neep that I ever purchased. It is the, the hourglass handle, olive wood with a small and very tight um, badger knot. It is losing hairs. It continues to lose hairs every shave. Um, so don't, don't worry if you see hairs coming out. It is, it is falling apart a little bit. That's that's my own doing. I just I was what I did for this knot was just kind of dumb, but it is actually still holding holding up overall very well and has worked so easily with the soap. There it is in the Captain's Choice bowl. You know, in contrast to last week's soap, the uh, Prohibition style soap is a much denser, much fatter, much heavier soap that requires soaking. This is completely the polar opposite. This just lathers almost immediately. I have a relatively dry brush. I've shaken up most of the water. I'm going to start off dry and just start loading. I'm going to add a little bit of water as it goes through. I'm going to load pretty heavily because today is of course the last day and then once I'm done with this, whatever remains in this bowl is going to get scraped out. I'll leave that to dry in a piece of wax paper and then, you know, Tuesday night or so, I will fold it into the Friedberg Franken soap which will truly be the most epic unicorn soap of all time. And I can barely wait to see how it ends up. All right, as you can see, it is already beginning to form a very nice sort of proto lather on the sides. I'm going to drip a little bit of water in there. Just a few drops, just sort of help it get going. You can hear almost, if you can hear that kind of immediate difference, it takes on a bit of a different, uh, a different tone to it. And you can see what's happening around the sides there. All right, another little bit of water and just load up the brush a little bit more and then I'm gonna start lathering. And there we go, that looks, that looks like a great start. As always, if I need to, I'll just load more. Now, you can see how close that is already to a to a, you know, a nice solid lather. I'm gonna add some more water to it, of course, but this lathers up so immediately, just zero effort. Like all these, all these Abati Lavantia soaps, everyone I've tried so far has had the same sort of basic characteristics. 
easy to load, very easy to lather. But I really, really enjoyed the scent profiles. The only one I think for me that was probably like my least favorite was the uh, the carrot and lettuce one, the vegano. But then I pass it on to a colleague who really, really liked it. So, you know, those scents, there is definitely something for everybody. The next one I have up in the mix, which will come, I don't know, probably in a couple months actually, is the, uh, um, it's a, it's a flowery, uh, it's a pollen based, pollen based soap. All right. I think that one is called the Italian stallion or something like that. All right. Well, as you can see, that's already creating a very nice lather. I'm going to just drip a little bit of water on. Yes. You're going to see some hairs come out of this brush, but I figure I'm going to continue to use it because I just love the handle so much and the knot itself is so good that I'm just going to use it until it gets to a point which will likely be years from now when it is no longer usable and then I will undertake a very careful excavation of the old knot and do my best to put something good in there. All right, now, man, great ladder, so easy to build. The scent, um, the scent strength when you lather it up is definitely there. It's not overpowering, sort of heavy on your face and uh, the amount of menthol is, it's sort of under, under the middle, let's say. You can definitely feel it, but it's not overwhelming at all. All right, I have the the, uh, the razor warmed up a little bit, and let's go ahead and start shaving. It's two and a half days or so of growth. Now, that posed a bit of a conundrum for me yesterday because yesterday was the uh, the inaugural North Carolina um, wet shaver meetup. It was hosted by Van Ulay. We did a great job putting the whole thing together, but I had to go unshaven to a shaving meetup. It's an outrage. Luckily, nobody said a word about it, so that was very kind of them. Pretty good attendance overall. Had a chance to meet some people that I've only been able to, uh, you know, meet on Facebook or on Reddit. Really, really nice to meet people in person. Had some wonderful chats. Got to see a bunch of products. Got to exchange some stories and you know offer some advice and get some advice in return. Really, really fun event. Some people drove quite a ways. If you drove from South Carolina and you know who you are, thank you for coming. If you drove from New Jersey and you know who you are, thank you for coming. Well, let's talk about the shave now. This is exactly how it's gone all week. Lather, fantastic. Scent, just a, a beautiful, sweet, beautiful, sweet, summery scent. Performance in the lather is just absolutely nothing to complain about. Just slick and easy to use, easy to lather. The razor is surprisingly good. It just completely walks through the beard for me and no issues with tugging or roughness, just so easy in use. And I think you can still find these readily, you know, or at least pretty easily. I've seen just a really cursory look on eBay, for example. I think these are absolutely still out there. All right, first pass, I mean, that's just easy, nothing to it. All right, lather, as is always the case, has settled down a bit and is even creamier than when I first created it. Oh, just absolutely beautiful. You have to say, overall, been extremely impressed with these soaps. You know, the improvements that the vendors made to this second version of the soap base for the second round of soap, soap scents. Performance has absolutely been just, you know, for me at least, has been top notch. And I've had the pleasure of being able to pass on samples of the soap to a person that I've known for quite a long time who is going through a bit of a den clearing. It's a person from whom I bought the Icon 102 recently. And uh, I think who had not had a chance to experience some of these newer artisan soaps. 
I was very happy to pass on some samples and to get his sort of a, uh, you know, new to these soaps feedback. Overall, extremely positive, and I was not surprised at all because these soaps are really good. All right, the across the grain pass. You have no idea, by the way, when making these videos, how incredibly hard it is at that moment to say across the grain and not against the grain. All right, here we go, across. I have to say, overall, this razor is uh, incredibly easy to use and just the shave has been so easy and so smooth. I hate to say zero work to get a great shave, but this has been really almost effortless this week. You know, you think about how old this razor is. You know, it's still an overall in really excellent condition. Blade is doing very well. You know, yeah, it's probably not as sharp as on day one, obviously, but still. Wednesday and Thursday were exceptionally close, even though those are sort of relatively quick morning shades for work. Very, very close to BBS. There we go. Yeah, just delightful shave. That's all there is to it. And every time I have one of these shaves and I just think about, I just hope that you are having the same kind of fun and the same kind of pleasure during your shaves as I am right now, because if it's this good, you should have a huge smile on your face. Now right here, I overshaved Monday and Tuesday, got a little enthusiastic on the uh, against the grain, overdid it a little bit. Entirely my own fault, just, you know, just too much. <sighs> wow, just, man, <laughs> this is so nice. So easy, and this, you know, this is one of those moments where I can, I can just say, hand on heart, that I have no issue with how mild that razor is. And I know that for many people, it's simply too mild. And that somehow, well, okay, if it's too mild in the sense that it is really not removing the hair, that's that's one issue. If it's too mild because you're under the impression that somehow the only true shave is an aggressive shave, mm, I think you're really kidding yourself. It happens a lot where people just sort of start on this quest to begin to, you know, accelerate their move to the most aggressive shave possible when in many cases I think it's really not necessary in a lot of people's cases I think it's actually just too much that's one of those unfortunate side effects that you do see sometimes in some of the forums is that people get the impression that mild shaves are for beginners Real shavers go for the most aggressive shave possible. No, oh, I don't agree. This is one of those razors where I would be perfectly happy to shave with this every day. Zero effort, easy to use, just, you know, nothing not to recommend it. Okay, this is the against the grain pass. Very light. Just really just gliding in this case. And if you're wondering, I do still remind myself, just watch the pressure. It's easy sometimes because of the sound of the razor makes.
compensate for that fact that it's still noisy by pressing down. Nah, don't do it. Let's just finish the under the jaw first. Residual slickness on the soap, really good. Menthol level is just right for me. It's a very nice light cooling, not overbearing at all. The nice thing about the, about the tech head style as well is that you can really get in very close. There is there is an overhang. It's certainly not pronounced, but it is there. It just sticks out just a just a touch. So that is something just to, just to bear in mind. Just a little bit under here. And trust me, I understand the, uh, the urge to overshave because especially if you are in the midst of a cleanup pass and the soap is still really slick and your face still feels really good and the razor is moving easily and there's no friction to the shave, it's just easy to keep going. Yeah, that is a very, very nice shave. I'm just gonna do this part one more time. Right there, by the way, is where you need to really resist the urge because you can still hear a bit of hair there. Don't want to fix that by really scrubbing. When I'm buffing, I'm not really scrubbing. It's very, very light. Just sort of dancing the razor over your skin. I'm not exerting really any pressure at all there. All right. Wow, wow, wow. Excellent, excellent shape. And the soap, when you're rinsing it off, just really, Really nice slickness. Scent is still there. Lighter, obviously, than when you're smelling it out of the container, but still definitely present. Now, I like the smell of ripe bananas. I know there are people that don't. I like the smell of coconut. I like the taste of coconut. So for me, this is a really nice combo. Now, it may remind some of you in the US with, for a, um, remind you of a rather popular uh, sunscreen, something like Banana Boat. I think there is a similarity there in the scent. Um, but this smells, uh, this smells great. It just may seem very familiar to you in some ways. All right, now let me just, uh, let me towel off. And then onto the aftershave, which is the aftershave version of the same scent. Now I've tried, I've tried two of these. I purchased the, um, the Laureato aftershave, which as you know, the, the Laureato scent on the soap and the soap itself is uh, absolutely one of my favorites. It's been one of my favorites this year. 
post shave skin feel is fantastic on that soap. Um, something about the, the, the Bay Laura oil in there makes for just really, really good post shave. Before I put on the aftershave, same, same thing here. These soaps, these soaps really do leave your face feeling hydrated, a bit moisturized, no tightness in the skin, no heat. As you can see, there's a very nice, close, even, comfortable shave. Zero complaints about that. All right, this is the, the bottle, Don Jose. Very cool label, by the way. There's all kinds of little pieces in there. I don't know if you can uh, get a good look on there, but a very interesting collection of uh, small iconography on there. This is uh, primarily an alcohol-based um, an alcohol-based aftershave, so it does not include witch hazel. So if you are, for example, very sensitive to just a straight alcohol aftershave, if you don't you know, sort of like that initial uh, alcohol hit or burn, this may not be for you. Uh, this is alcohol and a bit mentholated. Scent strength on this is pretty good. Strong, but not overly strong. Just a touch of sort of the alcohol heat and cooling. For me, this goes on a little bit hot at first, and then it immediately goes from like, it's sort of like an icy hot sensation. It starts off a little bit hot and then just descends into just a very nice, very nice cooling. The scent is uh, a nice, still sort of retains the sweetness, but I think it's a bit more of an even mix between the coconut and the banana. I'm gonna put on a little bit more in part because it's a huge bottle and why not? Scent itself, at least on my face, I don't think lingers too long, but I will say that course of the day, you can definitely still smell this on your hands quite a while after you've applied it. So um, it's not an overwhelming scent. You're not gonna get an elevator with people and have them sort of you know look at you with scans. Very nice, sweet, sweet scent to it and just a really good mix of the banana and the coconut. Wow, well, <sighs> hard to argue with that, I must say. Well, let's go ahead and let's review what we've used today for this. Once again, absolutely stellar shave. I, I don't know what to tell you. Every week, week on week, there's gonna come a few in the future, I'm sure, that are just not that great. It's gonna happen, but so far, I'm gonna keep the streak alive. <sighs> Let me just get some of the water off the off the lid there, the Don Jose from Abate y La Mantilla. Let me just show you the soap one more time. Comes in these large metal screw top tins. For those of you that are not fans of these tins because they can get dented, yes, that is indeed true. So that's something to bear in mind for these guys. Um, it is a very generous helping of soap. Uh, soft and a little bit tacky. Um, as I've said, exceptionally easy to lather. I've not had an issue with any of these soaps. The banana and coconut scent, a nice light, for me, a very kind of pleasant scent that brings a smile to my face, a great option for summer, a nice sort of middle of the road degree of menthol cooling, easy to lather, very easy to use. It lathers up almost immediately. This will take no work on your part to get to lather. As you saw, the lather remains stable throughout, very creamy, and then when you rinse it off, it has sort of that, uh, that uh, very nice kind of sheeting effect, very nice um, sort of poche feel, I just, well, what can I say? I've loved all those soaps so far, and I think very well done by those guys to come onto the market with a new product using kind of a new soap base that no one else is really doing. And so far, those products have been wonderful. Um, let's cover the razor. This is one of the ones that I purchased in the lot. Um, this is one of the number of Gillette Techs that I purchased, 1939 to 1941. I believe this is the, one of the military issue ones. Black bait-like handle, very light handle, easy to hold, no real slip. Standard Gillette Tech head, I guess. This does shave very, very comfortably. This I totally understand why when people sort of get it with these razors, why they just have a sense that maybe they can get rid of the rest of their razor collection. I'm not gonna do that. But I will say this is a exceptionally easy shave for me. Very smooth, no trouble at all on any part of the shave. Two days of growth gone without a worry in the world. Excellent, excellent razor. Really quite impressed with that. Today's brush, They're my original rod and as you can see, there's a, a few stray hairs. I'm losing, let's say, eight to 10 per shave, but of course, there's still a lot of hair in that knob, but I'm gonna keep going. I love the brush shape. This is the olive wood and the uh, hourglass handle. Just fits in my hand perfectly, and I'm gonna be bummed when that knot is done, but that is quite a ways in the future. And then to 
finish off this shave. Today's aftershave is the Don Jose matching aftershave for the soap from Abati La Mantia. Alcohol based, so yes, you should expect kind of a big sort of alcohol hit when you first put this on. The scent, I think, is a little bit more balanced than the soap itself. Maybe that's just because of the way that it comes out of the aftershave. Overall, big alcohol hit, nice cooling effect. The menthol is there, but not overwhelming at all. The scent, definitely there, um, but will dissipate, at least on my face, not quickly, but relatively quickly. But I could definitely still smell it in my hands for quite a while after that. Well, man, that was a lightning quick recap. Mm -mm. All I can say is I hope that when you shave, that's what you do at the end of your shaves too. Just a big contented sigh and a smile because what more can I say about that? That was absolutely fantastic. Top-notch shave once again. Well, thank you all so much again for watching. I really appreciate the time you're taking to watch these videos. As always, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave that against this video or any other video. I try to get back to those as quickly as I can. Thank you again for watching and until next time, goodbye. Silence on the set, for God's sake, woman.